Welcome to the Grow Your Practice podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Chad Madden, owner of Madden Physical Therapy and Breakthrough. Join me each week as we dive into the best practices, systems, principles, tips, and tricks to help you grow your private practice. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Grow Your Practice podcast. I'm your host, Chad Madden, and today we have the privilege of speaking with Dr. Sterling Carter. Sterling is a multifaceted entrepreneur, motivational speaker, and physical therapist. Also an, an army vet, 25 years, correct? That's correct. That's awesome. correct. Good, good to be here, Chad. Thanks. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. So you wrote a book with your twin brother, Stephen Levi Carter. Yes. Uh, and that book's Double Your Success. What, what inspired you and your brother to work together on something like that, like a book? A great question, Chad. I mean, I think the first thing was realizing that we had a story that was that was a story to tell, something that was that would hopefully motivate others and just really just encourage them that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. And that too many times we actually live in this box where we think that we can only accomplish so much. We can only get to that glass ceiling and that's it. And we're, we just wanted everyone to see and really realize that they can break through the, the glass ceiling. And there's so much more once you break through it. There, there's so much more out there. And, you know, Stephen and I, we, we, we own a bunch of different businesses. Our, our actual most, actually most successful business is a therapy staffing company. And the book was about how we grew Sterling Staffing Solutions and how it how it came to fruition and lessons learned and how we made it through the storms. And back then there was no COVID. So we were talking about the floods and in, in Houston and how we were able to, to combat that. But it was it was it's a story about resiliency and, and it, it it's it's timeless. That's great. Yeah, I, I know how hard it is to write a book. So just to, I can't imagine writing it with somebody else. So congratulations <laughs> to you for uh, for making that happen. The, you talked about Sterling Staffing Solutions. How'd you get started in that? And can you give a little bit of detail about what exactly you're helping practice owners with there? Sure, sure, sure. So I I, can't, I, I guess to still tell the story about Sterling Staffing Solutions, I have to tell the story about Sterling Physical Therapy and, and wellness. So of course, as you mentioned, Chad, I'm a physical therapist. I uh, used to work at a large hospital and just decided that I wanted to make a difference. And I thought that I could change the world in a bigger way than just working as a therapist. So in 2008, I opened up my first, first private practice, which was Sterling Physical Therapy and Wellness. And I grew up in Houston, been here my, my entire life. So I had a big network of peers, physical therapists, and then just a, a lot of contacts. I think when you're a twin, you just you get double the amount of people you you know because everyone thinks that you're the other person. And yeah, it's funny. But long story short, I kept getting calls from home health agencies and they were asking for physical therapists. They were like, hey, Sterling, can you come help us out and, and see some patients in their homes because we need some therapists. And I couldn't do it because I was working, you know, sun up to sun down um, at the physical therapy practice. Um, but I did have a bunch of friends, a bunch of peers that were PTs. And I just, and I kept getting the calls and I realized, you know, there, we may have something here. You know, I have these contacts and they don't know how to find a therapist, but I have the therapist and I know, and a the therapist looking for work and because they were calling me saying, hey, Sterling, can I come work for you? So I just put the two together. So with the help of my my twin brother, who's, background he's a business guy he has an mba and he's ran companies before so we call ourselves the yin and the yang because i had the healthcare expertise he had the business expertise he had a lot of money and so i was like hey invest in this dream of mine we're going to open up a therapy staffing company and so that's how it came to fruition and so what we do primarily we well we started off just staffing physical therapists and physical therapy assistants in the home health environment and home health is still our niche, but now we've grown significantly. So we do PT, OT, speech. We have social work. We do nurses. Uh, we do a little bit of like CNAs and home health, home care aides. And we're starting to get into local tenant like MDs and that sort of, sort of thing. And so we started up, we started up in 2011 
and it's just grown dramatically. We've been on the Inc. 500 list for the last five years, won a lot of different awards. And quite honestly, we weren't thinking about a book, but Forbes magazine has a book line. It's called Forbes Business Books. And they were looking for CEOs who had a great story to tell. And so they just called us up one day and they were like, hey, we want you to fly down to, I think it was Charlotte. It was either North Carolina or, or South Carolina, which is where their headquarters is located. And uh, they said, come down for a blueprint day. The blueprint day is we just ask you questions and see if there's a story there. So long story short, that's how we uh, started. Forbes helped us out. Um, we got the book done. It became an Amazon bestseller. And then we started doing motivational speaking. We opened up a consulting firm. And so that was our next business, business consulting firm. And so it's just been a fun ride. Wow, that's great. Yeah, you were the first person ever to send me a Forbes.com link for the <laughs> references for my prep work. So I appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I remember what Forbes was telling us when we were first writing the book and they were saying that, it's all about trying to do, trying to grow your brand and trying to market yourself as the expert within your industry. And they, they just they were just, okay, we're gonna help you do that. And we can't guarantee you you're gonna be on the New York sell, you know, New York Best Times a selling list or anything like that. But what we can do is guarantee you that we're gonna get you out there. You're gonna be able to tell your story. And we're, we're going to hopefully make sure that people understand that you're one of the best, you're one of the experts in your industry. And that's how, I mean, it's definitely happened. That's great. In your book, it, you emphasize the, important, uh, the importance of passion in business. So how did you find your passion? Have you ever erred? Did you ever, you know, are there any pitfalls that we should avoid as we're looking for our own passion? And how has it driven your various? Yeah, things? great question. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of Simon Sinek, who is an author. He wrote the books, Finding Your Why, and a great book for all of those out there who haven't had a chance to read it. If you're trying to figure out what, what drives you and what makes you kind of tick, it's a great book to read so you can kind of figure that out. And I think that's where it really, that story resonated with me and trying to kind of determine what I'm passionate about. And I guess... It, it really just kind of re reconfirmed what I was already thinking because that book came out after 2008. But you you have to, it has to be something that you're, that you actually love to do, you're passionate about so much so that when you're broke, which you will be when you're starting up a, a, any business and, and you're having a hard time paying your staff or paying the bills, et cetera, that you st that it's it's you're passionate enough about it where it keeps you going because being in business for yourself it's it's a lonely road and you're going to put in long hours 60 to 80 hours a week and really sometimes and I'm sure you can attest to this Chad it just seems like there's no end in sight I thought one at some point I was going to be able to just to coast and fly around the world and the business was just going to run itself but that's not necessarily the case so I would say being passionate is really important. As far as lessons learned, you can't do everything. So one of the things that, that Stephen and I are guilty of is that we try to, if we see that there is a, an opportunity and we think we can fill it, we'll, we'll jump into it. And sometimes that can be, you, you're, you wear yourself too thin and you're working on too many different projects at the same time. So I would definitely say focus. And then in regards to your passion, if it's something that you're passionate about, that's the first thing. But then you also have to make sure your, your audience, that there is a need for that passion. So say if you're passionate about pelvic floor therapy, you have to make sure that there's enough patient, potential patients out there that can fill that need where you can open up a business or a private practice where it's just pelvic floor. Because if not, if you don't have those two, you're not going to succeed. And of course, location, location, location. So I, we've learned that passion plus opportunity plus location really gives you that winning solution. That's great. This is crazy, but I actually recommended that Simon Sinek book. Oh, really? Yeah, See, great called. minds think alike. <laughs> yeah, with another owner. Uh, literally have it like three feet away from me right now. But I uh, love it. Yeah, that's great. So you mentioned passion, 
focus, location, 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 any other key principles of business that you've you've used or relied on as you've scaled multiple businesses? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that what's really, really important is the basics and, and double your success talks about that, because what people don't understand is that everything is about processes and about those key kind of metrics, those KPIs. And so if we don't get the basics right, then nothing else will really perform well. So first and foremost, you got to do the, do your due diligence, do the research and, and put together an, an effective business plan. Yeah, and and so you so a, a great business plan is going to take you through all of the the pros and the cons. You know how long may it possibly take? Worst case scenario, best case scenario. How much money will I need up front? You know because you're probably going to need enough to cover your expenses for the first year because no one jumps out there and you know and succeeds in in the first three months unless you're Chad Matten and then you can open up a, a clinic and then I think I think you were telling us that it was. You were bustling at the seams in three months. I remember a story, something like that. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah no, no. I, would, lucky, I would... lucky a couple times. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, just definitely having a plan and then a timeline so you can start implementing that plan. And we're big on always making sure that you have a mentor or a coach because you can never, there's always more that you can learn. And then also having someone that externally is out there to, to look and see what you're doing, they're going to have a different view, a different lens. And so sometimes we're, we get stuck in the weeds and you need someone who can kind of look at it objectively and give you some insight. That's great. You, you talked about, so in the Forbes article, it talked about brand awareness and establishing your, how do you think about brand awareness for for your companies and in particular sterling physical therapy and wellness oh it's absolutely key i mean we have we have so much competition out there nowadays right and we're we're, we're dealing with big corporate companies that have a lot more spending money to spend in regards to marketing and all of that kind of good stuff so we really have to be strategic about how do we grow our brand and and what do we do and i, I think that the most important thing that we can do is really focus on a niche, really kind of do niche marketing, find out what 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 you're really good at and what's really out there and then establish yourself as an expert in that particular area, doing blogs, doing vlogs, doing podcasts. A lot of these things don't really cost a whole lot, but it helps to build, build your awareness. Of course, having a, a really strong Instagram channel, Facebook page, just really just telling the story, telling the story. And then as much as you can, because I think it's one of the most valuable things that we can do is Google reviews. So if you're trying to build your brand, you really, really want to make sure that your fans, which are your patients, those raving fans, that that they're taking the time out to tell their story about you and about what, what they've been able to, to, to do with your health. And so all that helps to grow your brand. Yeah. Great. Very important. Um, you mentioned some other books in here too that have influenced you. Limitless by Jim Quick. Yes, yes, yes. Have you read that one? I, I've read it within the last year and actually bought it for my uh, son that's in the Navy. But yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, huge so, fans. Can you tell everybody how that influenced you? Oh my God. One of the greatest books. I think that for the most part, physical therapists are, we, we love uh, knowledge and reading and we're lifelong learners. And one of the things that we always struggle with is, you know, how can I learn more? How can I remember more? How can I be more productive? How can I even, you know, quote unquote, become smarter or become limitless? And Jim Quick, who also has, he's also done a TED talk on Limitless as well, is just a brilliant guy who really has done the research to figure out how to be that your best possible version of yourself. And what he talks about is that our superpower is our minds, the human beings in general, and that what makes us is so special and, and really the kings of the, of the, the world is that we, we, we're able to, to utilize our minds um, so effectively and that Unfortunately, a lot of people underutilize 
their minds and their brains. So he talks about skills on speed reading. He talks about skills on active learning, active recall. He talks about, you know, memorization, diet, exercise, everything that all together really helps to make a difference in how we learn and how we retain information and how we grow. Any biohacks that you picked up from Jim Quick that you use on a daily or regular basis? So most of the most of the biohacks I think I was doing. Um, I really like the active recall part where he's, he talks about, you know, you read, you know, a chapter and then you stop and then you actively kind of recall what you knew, what you learned in that information without even opening it back up. You're just recalling it and it's supposed to be a really, really good way of just retaining information. So I like that. And I want to, I haven't really started using it like I want to, not just yet, but I, I definitely will. So yeah, I, I, I feel when there's a little gap when I'm going through that exercise and I can't remember something, specific, uh, I know the idea is there and yeah. I can't see the blank. Then when I'm forced to go back and look at that, I'll never forget what that is. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So it's, and, yeah, I love that process. <laughs> it was the other funny, funny part with, that Jim was talking about was our learning, I guess, endurance is not very long. So if you're trying to sit and read a book for three or four hours and your expectation is to retain it, it's just not going to happen. You just got to stop and take a break and, and get and come back to it. So you mentioned another book here, Key Person of Influence by Kevin Harrington. I've never, I'm not familiar with that. What's that about? Oh my goodness. So it really kind of speaks into our ability to become an industry expert or really become the professional person, the person that someone goes to when they have questions, right? Because at the end of the day, we want to be that physical therapist that when, when someone has a question about whatever, call Sterling, call Chad, right? And so what, what, what it's, it's such an amazing book, but what he talks about is how do we present ourselves? What's our elevator speech? How do we engage with people? How do we get the best from a conversation without asking for anything? How do we, and, and, and he goes into marketing branding as well. How do we brand ourselves and put ourselves out there so that we, we, we present ourselves as, as our, we, we, people accept us as the industry expert. And one of the best things that you can do is write editorials, write a book, and 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 do some some sort of research because you know Chad and I were talking about it earlier. If I can send you a reference about Sterling Carter and it has books written and and podcasts and and articles and all that kind of good stuff, someone's going to look at that and they're going to say, "Wow, this guy has something to say. He must be pretty important." And so those are the things that helps to bring you know the, to make you a key key person of influence. So a great book to read. I would definitely recommend it. Awesome. Yeah. The, the big thing that I keep hearing you say in, in different ways is be of value. Yes. Valuable in the marketplace. Valuable in the marketplace. Yeah. And value is not about what you put, the price that you put on yourself. It's really the more you give, the more valuable you become. So yeah. it's, it's, it's really about giving and then you will receive because people will understand and appreciate what you have to say and how you're helping others. And then you become valuable. Great. So Sterling, I remember the first time I met you live or I, I can't remember if it was at an event or in a zoom call, but I heard you talk about your practice and the, I, and I forget the exact question that you asked me, but I was like, Oh, he's going to be fine. Like <laughs> you're, you're going to implement. So I know, you know, you're, you're hungry for business growth. You're growing your practice. You did have 10 full-time clinicians. Not sure where you're at in size yes. right now. Still, still, still sitting right there at 10. So can you talk about some of the challenges that you've had at Sterling Physical Therapy and Wellness? Because I mean, we're, if you're anywhere in the country right now, we're facing the same thing with lower range. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll, I think that, we, well, I'll give you the list and, and then I'll just talk about how, how we all have the same problems. And a lot of times we think that there's not anything you can do to fix them. So uh, one, of course, is low reimbursement rates. What we're seeing across the board, Medicare is dropping their rates. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield just dropped theirs. We're, we're, we're just dealing with this 
our, our, our patients want more, our, our therapists want, want to get paid more, but we're getting in less. So low reimbursement rates was a, was a, was a big factor. The other thing was just being able to just lack of referrals, because I think as, as the, the profession has changed, because we've had so many new clinics to open up and that kind of thing. And we, we it's just like the marketing is crazy. So how do we compete with all these competitors out there? How do we keep getting referrals? How do we market to the consumers now? Because now the doctors are no longer our number one uh, resource. So marketing, advertising, what's the best thing that's going to actually give you the biggest ROI, return on investment? Because, you know, I'm sure we're all guilty of sometimes doing a shotgun approach and hoping that something is going to stick and something's going to work and it just doesn't. So you know, I think those those were, were big ones. One of the things that I talked to Chad, we talked about was also productivity. You know, how many unit, units are we we billing, how many patients are we seeing a day? What's our quota? You know, how efficient can we be? So having the right process is where we actually can be profitable because as things change, you know, we got to figure out, we may have to have to do our business processes a little bit differently in order to survive. So that's just a few. Yeah. few of and then you've had some pretty big wins in the, the last year or two with negotiating rates, adding on cash-based services. Can you talk through some of those as well? Yeah. So, so, you know, going through the whole breakthrough process, you know, part of breakthrough and, you know, you really don't know what you don't know. Number one, I think that all therapists just kind of assume that you can't fight the big dragon, which are, which are private health insurances and, and not even to try to negotiate a higher rate because, it's, you're just not going to get it. But surprisingly, I was able to increase my um, reimbursement rate for both United Healthcare and, and Cigna, which are two of our biggest payers, by 15% or more. In addition to that, we are pending, we've, we submitted a request for an increase with Humana, and we're just waiting to see what they're going to say. And we're going for Blue Cross Blue Shield next, which is really a, the the one that we really want to see increase because we see more Blue Cross Blue Shield than anyone else. So that was really exciting. So that was number one. And I would not have known that if I didn't have kind of the structure. We had a whole course on how to write write the the emails, the letters, what to say, what to how to how to add the value proposition on why your practice deserves to get paid because of all of these things. And so it worked out really, really well. The other thing that we that that I that we we wanted to do is try to figure out how can we get more revenue in the door with these lower low reimbursement rates. And 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 so, you know, I love the idea of what I call the add-ons. How can we increase the value proposition? So we have a patient that comes in for physical therapy and typically the value is about a thousand dollars, right? But if we can, but with these add-ons, if we can get it to twelve hundred dollars, twelve hundred fifty fifty dollars, even fifteen hundred dollars, we can increase the 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 uh, revenue on that one patient by almost fifty percent, and it just makes sense. It makes it a whole lot easier. You don't have to worry about getting as many referrals in if you can convert every one of your patients into you know into a fifty percent markup. So what we did was was we added on uh, laser, cold laser, the invoice uh, laser. Um, we also added in dry needling. Um, we added in shockwave therapy and facilitated stretch therapy. I think those were the main ones. And so we we, we started marketing those. We also came up with, and, and Chad, I, I think we talked about this. I don't, I don't know if, if you remember one of the courses that we had, but we created a plan of care in which we talked to our patients, okay, this is your standard plan, but these are add-ons and this is what I'm recommending that could help you with your healing process. And so we give them that form and with a, with a down at the bottom, a guarantee saying that we're gonna do everything we can in order to make you better, we're committed to your care, all that kind of good stuff. And then an area where they sign saying that they, they're, they're promising to attend all their appointments do their homework and to do everything possible to make their health a priority. So that was really huge too, because it really takes them through that process. We even had, it's so much, I could go on and on, but I can't remember, is it the Bachrock method? Is it something that starts with Bachi method. So we implemented the Bachi method, which is a great way 
to give your patients a trial of the add-on and then allow them to make the decision. They can decide if they want to go with the regular therapy or with the, with the add-on. Because one of the things that we see in, with physical therapists, we're healthcare givers and we're not sellers, right? And so it's hard for us to sell products or sell services. But if we give it, if we using the bocce method is not a hard sell. You're just providing them the 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 option, you give it to them and you allow them to make a decision on if they want to do it, want to do it or not. So it's their choice. So we did it, we did the add-ons, we did the plan of cares, we did the negotiate the rates, and then we started started looking into calls, intake calls, conversions, because we were, weren't were converting as high as we needed to in regards to leads coming in. You know, what are we doing? And and what we learned is we need to answer the phone within, you know, two minutes. The the, the, the uh, percentage of getting a patient to, to convert goes, goes dramatic, is dramatically less the more time that goes by. And so my my intake team really didn't understand the importance of that until they went through the training. Okay, we have to call this patient. And we have to call, call them, text them, email them multiple times. What are your click funnels? How are you going to nurture that relationship? So it's it's so much. I mean, it, it, it's so much to learn today. I could go on and on. I'm a, I'm a uh, you know, avid studier of the, of, the, of the process. But yeah, those are a few of the things that really stand out. Yeah, very good. And, and you're also providing a lot of information in your community. You're running workshops along the same line. Oh, what? yeah. It's like, how could I forget about Sorry. that? So uh, we went from one program in Breakthrough when we we went into the workshop portion of, of Breakthrough. And what we really learned is that, again, if you're wanting to improve your value proposition, we need to give to the community that has taken such good care of us. So we started implementing free workshops. And so those workshops, we invite past patients, we invite community, and we just say, hey, if you're having back pain, for example, come in so you can learn a little bit more about how to treat the back pain. And and what we do in, the, in that workshop is we educate. We talk to them about what is back pain, what causes it, how can you treat it? And then we do you know, a special little miracle for them to, to show and prove what physical physical therapy can do. And I will say that for a lot of folks, and you're probably aware of this, but a lot of people just don't know what we do as, as physical therapists. So this is an opportunity for us truly to educate the public on not only their condition, but how we can help that condition and, and just how valuable we are. So it's, it's been good. Yeah, that's great. And I just one point hit me that as you were sharing all the wins there. One of my favorite things to do in working with other owners, and I mean, you mentioned Bob Bocci, right? You yeah. mentioned renegotiating rates, which was shared by Tony and Melissa Sear. Yes. Uh, Bob's in California. You're in Texas. Tony's in, Tony and Melissa are in Florida. Um, so we have a, a nice little group sharing their wins as they go along. And on your intake form, in terms of the recommendation, what you said there, basically the plan of care summary, here's the standard plan, here's the, the add-ons that can help you heal more quickly that I recommend. Like you've taken that to another level. So I love how you're not only implementing, but you're also thinking through it with your group and taking it to another level. I love that. So thanks. thanks. The other thing that we, we did too is we created phases of the physical therapy program. One of the things that, that we, we also talked about in the program is, is getting our patients to complete their full plan of care. And there's so much research out there. And I think we just in general in the physical therapy pro profession, and Chad, you probably know these, these numbers off, off, the, off your, you know, right off your head, but I think it's like 40% of our patients we lose within the first four to six uh, pay visits where they just stop coming. And so it's always, it's, there's this big, if we could just think about how much, how many more patients and how many, how much more value and, and income could we generate if every patient came in for their full plan of care? So what we also implemented on that plan of care is we explained to them, these are the, this is phase one, this is phase two, this is phase three, this is what happens in these three phases. You may not need to go down to phase two or phase three, but if, if these are your goals, 
then you're probably going to need to get to, you, we're probably going to need you for this long. So we set the ex expectations in the beginning and the expectations are based on their goals and their why. So we even implement a little bit of find your, your why and, and Simon Sinek in there. We get the, the psychology. Of what would you love to, what would you be able, what would you love to be able to do by the time you finish up with physical therapy? Okay. So that's going to be our goal for you. So. Yeah. yeah. To back you up there, the, the three phases of healing, I believe originated out of the university of Pittsburgh. I think they had a publication mm -hmm. on it, but and phase one is reduction of pain and inflammation. Phase two is restoration of normal objective measures. So range of motion, strength, et cetera. Phase three is return to function. So exactly like you said, you know, we have patients that are coming in, we see them, you know, for a week or two, they're out of inflammation and they're like, okay, I'm better. Right. And then what happens, what research shows is two or three months later when they have an exacerbation, now they've dropped off. We have no follow-up with them, no conversation. And they go to try that, you know, play pickleball or surf or whatever it is that they wanted to do. Now, when they try to do it, they have pain again. What they say is, I went to physical therapy and it didn't work. It's a really good point. Yeah. So that's that's where that came from. I love that you're implementing that. I, I see a lot of success in educating patients on that as well. I don't know the exact numbers, but I know our plan of care as an industry, our plan of care completion is pretty fairly anemic. It's less than 50%, which is yeah. not good for us. I had another question here for you. It was on mentorship. Oh, I, it's actually on inner circle. So in one of the articles that I was reading about you, you had talked about having a strong inner circle. Yes. So, and I, it seems like you've done amazingly well at this. Can you talk about who you let in and who doesn't get into your inner circle and how you work with them, how you, how yeah. you invest with them. So first and foremost, building a strong inner circle starts with getting rid of the, the weak, weak uh, links in your circle. That's probably the first step. So you can have room for a stronger inner circle and it's hard, right? Um, we can all probably think about those stories of, of, of our friends that we had in high school um, that we love dearly, but as we progressed over 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 the years, you know they've gone one direction, we've gone another direction. And I always say, if you find your find that you're the smartest person in in the room, then you're probably in the wrong room. You're probably in the wrong wrong place. So what 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 Stephen and I really try to do is be really strategic about developing a strong circle. And you're almost, I mean, it is, it's, just, it's a strategy and you have to make sure that the people that you um, are have, have around you actually bring value to your life. And it's not just, you know, it's just not just like from a monetary standpoint or whatever, it's maybe someone that, that is very supportive and and they're, they're, they communicate really well. So if you need someone to talk to, they're there for you. You know, someone that has a very, very strong sensing ability, someone who is, you know, I don't know, who, who's a who's really, really good with, with business acumen. As physical therapists, we're great with healthcare, but we may not be great with uh, business. We get one a class, I think, on, on, on starting up your own practice at the most, at least it, it was years ago. And so find, having someone who's ran their own business or someone who has an MBA is really important. So just really work on that circle. And as you build it up, it, it becomes pretty amazing. And then, and, and you just grow, you know, you're growing because you're, you have all these, these, these uh, strong people around you. So really important. That's great. For our listeners that want to connect with you or learn more about you, what's the best way for them to do that, Sterling? Sure. So there's a lot of different different ways. I think Instagram is great. My hashtag or, or what name or whatever, I guess, social name is just Dr. Sterling Carter. So you can find, find me there. My website is drsterlingcarter.com. You can always reach out to me via email. That's always the best way. And it's sterling at sterlingtherapy.com. I uh, another another book that I uh, that I love is the four hour work, work work week. And so just know that I can't even think of the author right now, but he, what he recommends Tim yeah, Ferris. Tim Ferriss. What he recommends is that your emails it's it's really, really important, but you set an expectation. So I have at the bottom of my email where I say, you know, 
This will be responded to within 24 to 48 hours and allows us to focus on other things. So we're not just answering emails all day throughout the day. So reach out to me at sterling at sterlingtherapy.com, but don't expect a response within 15 minutes. I'll, I'll definitely contact you within 48 hours. That's great. I, I, I love it. Final question for you, Sterling. You've mentioned quite a few books in here. What's the most influential book you've ever read in your your business, your entrepreneurial journey? Wow, so many good ones. Let's see, what which one would be the best? You know, there's one that I would probably recommend, and I usually always recommend it, and this will be the one day when I can't remember the title, but it's in chat. You may be able to help me out with this. It, the author is Jim Keller, who owns Keller Realty. The one, one thing. thing, the one thing. Yes. I knew we were going to, we were, we were going to get it. So the one thing by Gary Keller, absolutely amazing book, because sometimes we really need to figure out how to just focus and, and focus on the most important thing, because sometimes we have so much going on. We do the easy things first. And, and that makes us feel like we're really productive, but we're not moving the needle because we're not taking care of the most important things, the one thing. So great book, definitely helps put things in perspective. So the one thing by Gary Keller. Yeah, love that. I'll back you up on that. That was a game changer. Yes. You know, that's so cliche, but I, I was stuck for a while. Uh -huh. um, and it was actually here at Breakthrough and Carl, the CEO recommended, he said, hey, check this book out. I think it'll help you. And I read it in a weekend. Like once I got started, I was like, yeah, wow, it's a great book. Man. Yeah. So great recommendation. Love that. Sterling, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for doing this and everything you're doing, not only in the trenches of private practice PT, but also in the business and entrepreneurial world as well. Thank you, Chad. I had a great time and I'll see you this weekend. Yeah, I'll see you in a couple of days. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please rate five stars and share with someone who would enjoy this podcast or find it helpful. Take care. Bye-bye. What would adding $10,000 to your bottom line do for your practice? Let me show you how with our program, Profitability Under Pressure. Hi, I'm Chad Madden, and I'm assuming that you're a private practice owner wrestling with profits, revenue per visit, hiring, and in the end, you want to help more people. I'm here with some exciting news for clinic owners just like you. You don't want to miss this. This course is a game changer. It's helped clinic owners add big numbers to their earnings. People like Joe and Kathy Scarpedo, who doubled their clinic's value in under a year. Tony and Melissa Sear, they grew their practice from less than a million dollars in revenue to over $3 million each year. Now, you might be thinking, is this all about money? No, it's much more. It's about taking care of your team your patients, and your family. It's about making your clinic the best it can be. Let's face it, money in private practice isn't growing like it should. But don't worry, that's where our course comes in. In just three months, Profitability Under Pressure will teach you important business skills, like how to make more effective use of your space, how to increase your lifetime patient value and improve your payer mix. There's even a special part on hiring and retaining great staff. Joining means that you're not alone. You'll be part of a group of clinic owners all working to get better. We'll be right there to help you. Are you wondering if this is right for you? Let's find out together. Apply to Profitability Under Pressure. It's easy. There's no pressure and it's all about your clinic and your practice. We have an upcoming deadline, May 17th at midnight. When you apply to Profitability Under Pressure, you'll unlock valuable bonus content the ultimate reimbursement renegotiation bundle, how to hire and incentivize staff, the direct to consumer marketing course, and the zero to profitable de novo training. This is for you if you're going to open a new location. To qualify, you must apply by May 17th. The program comes with a $10,000 guarantee. We guarantee that when you implement the strategies in the course, you'll increase your profit by $10,000 or more in 90 days or your money back. Now's the time to make your clinic stronger for you, your team, and your patients. Click below to apply.